Hey guys, Shaba TLK back here with another episode of analyzing this wonderful um, Lion King 2 10 496 uh, production script. In the last episode, we uh, kind of got to this point where um, Aisha is thinking Kovu doesn't really love her and was using her to get to um, her father. We're going to see what Kovu says now. That we've finished page 70, and now we are on to pages 71 through 80 of an 88-page script, of the 88-page script. So, after this episode, there's one more episode left. And let me just say, you guys should not be disappointed. Let's get into it. Kovu. <clears throat> I don't want to hurt you. She can feel her... She can feel her world beginning to crumble. It's not true. Or leave me alone. That's the resounding. That's a resounding yes. Aisha can feel the rug being yanked from beneath her. Do as you're told. Clambering for stability. You are not my father. No, I am worse. You need somebody. I don't need anybody. She turns before the tears hit. I don't need anybody. And then she runs off on her own, alone. Well, that's just fine with her. That's just fine. Rafiki in his tree. The baboon sits dejectedly. It wasn't supposed to end this way. Meanwhile, the outsiders are prepping for war, sharpening claws on rocks, rolling in a mud hole, using earth like paint. They cover themselves in camouflage. They are hardcore, bloodthirsty mercenaries. They can't lose. Outside of the Cave of Pride Rock, night. Simba stares up at the heavens. Somewhere up there, Mufasa, the Mufasa constellation is staring down. Oh, we have Mufasa. I know, I've never seen that mentioned before. Interesting. Hmm. Mufasa constellation. Okay. Simba. You said you always be there for me. I need to know what you would do. How am I to be a great king? Nala paths. Behind, up behind him. She'd never question her king, but she's a little cheesed at her husband. Simba can feel the unspoken reprimand. As for her, it's for her own good. She'll understand someday. You're so busy consulting with the dead, you won't even listen to the living. Is what she replies. That, I love that line. That's great. <clears throat> she turns and strides away, leaving Simba reeling from that. He looks up questioningly, question, questioningly, as if in response, thunder rolls and lightning dances on the horizon, but this isn't a cosmic response or a sign from Mufasa. This is Mother Nature, letting loose her annual tempest. Thick black clouds are rolling in, smothering the night sky, lightning jags and strobes across the mass, strobes the mass, flood storms. A black curtain is separating him from his spiritual father. He's on his own now, brother. Why does it say that? Why? <clears throat> Excuse me. Aisha in a cave. The sky is smothered in a flickering in flickering black clouds. Fat, heavy, and ready to let loose. It is literally our darkest hour. Aisha lies inside confused, angry, but it's anger born of pain. There's a noise outside the cave. She stands bristling, ready for danger. Hello, it's Rafiki. Aisha startled, then in instantly catches herself. She's defiant, defiantly independent. Go away. Rafiki looks around, appraising her new digs. A cold, dank, dank, lonely carry cave. Well, ha! Look, you have everything you ever wanted. That's right. I'm an honorable warrior. I'll make my mark. Now leave me alone. Yes, alone is good. You don't need no one. That's right. You take care of yourself. Let the others do the same. Your father has all the pride lands. Kovu has gone back to the outsiders. Wrong. He's been exiled from the, outs the exiles. Bye. And he's gone. Aisha is stunned for a moment. And then follows him. Outside the path to Pendy. Uh oh. This guy. Okay. We recognize the spot. Kovu and Aisha tried to avoid Rafiki here. 
She's trying not to show that she cares. Doing a lousy job. You mean... He's on his own? He can take care of himself, but he doesn't want to be alone. She looks away and notices footprints in the dirt. The path is crisscross. The path is crisscrossed with a variety of lion tracks. A little bit of typos here. That's okay. That's great. Uh, who cares what he wants? If he's going going to make a mark in in the world, he's going to do it alone, right? With his staff, Rafiki begins to scratch out the marks. He hits a hard pan. They won't erase. He stops, eyes glued to her reaction as she, she studies the jumble of lying print, prints. She instantly knows. These are mine. How can you be sure? There are so many. Anyone can recognize them. They don't have to be separate to be unique. The light of understanding is beginning to dawn for her. Wow, that's a cool callback, though, with the prints from the beginning, if you guys remember. Interesting. And these scenes would have been cool. See? She looks up the path where the two lion tracks fade to the horizon, side by side, like lovers. We shouldn't have to walk a path alone. Well, who? Now you're talking monkey business. What a weird line. You'll understand. Catching yourself. Someday. She sounds like her father. She can finally see the light and wisdom in those words, and she charges off into the night, the baboon calling after her. Go on, then. Get out of here. Who needs you? Go! Oh, man. The wildlands. She stops, scanning the horizon the limited light of the clouds. They strobe more heavily, and the thunder rolls closer. Time is running out. Aisha. Kovu? As she searches the lands, we hear... Her thoughts on a song. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so, this is later titled "Love Will Find." Um, Love Will Find a Way. But um, we're gonna go through it because it's apparently not even titled a song in this. It's just titled "In a Perfect World," when we've never known, we would never need to face the world alone. They can have the world. We'll create our own. As we, she sings, we see her checking out the various places she and Kovu had visited. This is actually much better, though. This, the whole scenes with this, too, that they're playing. I may not be brave or strong or smart, but somewhere in my secret heart I know love will find a way anywhere I go. I'm home, if you are there beside me like dark, turning into day. Somehow we'll come through, now that I've found you, love will find a way. After her long search, she finds Kovu, outside the crystal cavern, his guard is up. But she won't be deterred, and takes his paw, gently placing it on her cheek. This one hit. The, the one he hit. She then reaches out and strokes his. The same loving gesture he witnessed between Nala and Simba. It feels better than ever he, than he ever imagined, and his heart melts. He starts to sing, apparently. That's like in the film, but this is a cool... Th I was so afraid. Now I realize love is never wrong, and so it never dies. There's a perfect world shining in your eyes. And then them both. And if only they could feel it too. And it feel it. It's, it should be feel it too because it sounds better. <laughs> and if only they could feel it. The happiness I feel with you. They know love will find a way anywhere we go. We're home. If we are there together, like dark, turning into day, somehow we'll come through, now that I've found you, love will find a way, love will find a way. So a little bit different in the way it's structured, but also... There's a little bit slight changes, like it was like, I know love 
will find a way. Like, that's how it goes in, in the final version of this. Stuff like that. Moving on. The song ends, and they s sit staring at each other's eyes. Hope has been rekindled in his spirit. I finally know who I really am. She looks into his eyes, waiting. I'm it. Tag. He turns, a, he turns and bounds off. She's stunned half a second, then charges after him. They frolic and romp. He's found acceptance and fun. She's found her own strength and identity. And for a few glorious moments, the world is perfect. They race inside Crystal Cavern. And, and as the game continues among the stalagmites in Crystal Slabs, four dozen Aisha's chasing four dozen Kobus, which is real, which the reflection, running, carousing the, so the slide together, nose to nose, then turn to look at a slab of crystal. Its broken surface reflects their faces in various partial images. The dominating refract refraction is half Aisha and half Kobu. Hey, look, we are one. And suddenly, that's what Kobe says, apparently, and suddenly, so this is how they were going to do this scene, instead of a puddle of water, and I love this scene much better. Why do they get rid of this? Probably continuity, but it. this was such a much better way of doing this scene. The one that was in the actual film. Uh, at the end. And suddenly, it hits her. Of course. It was so simple. Right in front of her, all along. Now she knows with dead certainty. We have to go back. They won't accept me. Will you accept them? He hadn't thought of it that way. Of course. He nods. They stare at each other, gaining strength from the other's eyes. Then finally... Kovu. My mother won't wait any longer. She'll she'll go for go to war. Interesting. Again, I didn't change it. He says mother's still. Interesting. So is he like a stolen cub? Or like, what's going on with this? This is really interesting. So he... it I think it is, but like at the same... So... Kovu is her son, but not really. She's, like, stolen him, maybe, or something. I don't know how this is going. But he's not, she's not her biological son yet. Still calls her... Anyway. How are we going to stop them? Good question. Aisha has, Aisha has no answer. Then it hits them both. And they smile knowingly. As if to let us in their inner thoughts. An instrumental refrain of music reminds us of Love Will Find a Way. Interesting. And they turn and charge into the stormy night. Lightning flashes and lo thunder roars, rolls. Music kicks into high gear, heart thumping, blood pulsing music that makes our heart, our souls soar. Kovu and Aisha are going home. <clears throat> Extreme long shot of the savannah night. As our two heroes run across the plains, lightning flashes and the rain pours, but they have a mission in mind and they run in a perfect unison. Inside Pride Rock Cave, night. Simba steps in and out of the rain to find. In Simba steps in out of the rain to find Timon and Pumbaa pacing nervously, guiltily. What are you doing? Ah, good question. Let me ask you one. Hypothetically, very hyp, hypothetically, very hypothetically, very hypothetical. Okay, hypothetically, very hypothetical. Again, he's, they have a joke in in the final version. Of hypothetically, very hypothetically. There's this guy, see, but he's not a lion. No, no, he's not a lion. Yeesh, definitely not a lion. And his daughter, um, say, vanished. Kiara's gone? Just, or, oh, I said Kiara, but it's actually Aisha, I forgot. Aisha's gone? Just then, a panic, that's the line. Panic Zazu comes sweeping in out of the pounding rain. He's frazzled. Sire, the outsiders are on the attack. Heading this way. It's war. War. Sudden, Simba instantly bursts into action, commanding, Assemble lionesses. Move. Now. Zazu takes off to do so. To do just that as. Zira and her outsiders are charging across the plains. The rain is washing away in the, the mud camouflage. But enough stays to make the mercenaries blend and shift into the landscape. An ominous, scary image of ghosts like death on the warpath, while in the burnt-out grass plains, Aisha and Kovu run through the charcoal landscape, heading home. Rain is pouring down, turning the ashy landscape into soup. They can't hold their footing as they clamber up a hill. One step forward, two steps back, they're not going to make it to 
Simba and his lionesses racing to meet Zera and their and their and their mercs halfway. Timon and Pumbaa ready as always to protect and help their pal, unaware that the tangle of logs in the burnt out ravine have formed a natural dam. Floodwater is building but up behind the be yeah. Floodwater is building up behind the twisted wreck that killed Nuka. The logs shift an in an inch, then settle as more pressure builds behind. Aisha and Kovu pound through the knee deep water, following past the natural dam, but it looks ready like it's ready to blow. They charge on toward the Antelope Gorge night. Little Bighorn. The final showdown, as Simba's pride and Zira's outsiders arrive at the lip of the gorge. Both sides freeze. The battlefield lay spread between them. You can serve the tension in slices. Lions growl, clawing, clawing the muddy earth, gouging it. Hackles raise. Simba looks at the gorge. The gorge where his father died. How, how appropriate. He, sm he swallows. Then lightning strikes, stabbing our eyes in bright light. Just to get our attention, Zira puffs up full height and... It's over, Simba. I have dreamed of nothing else for years. Boy, does she need a hobby. I've always liked. I spy with my little eye. It's one of the being interesting. Last chance, Zira. Go home. I am. Crack. Thunder rolls like a starter's pistol. And the battle kicks off into gear. The outsiders charge and the pride counterattacks. And both sides slam into the middle of the field. The outsiders swarm over the lionesses who fight back savagely. One and one. In a battle of demil proportions as Aisha and Kovu keep spreading this way. Pushing past exhaustion. They continue home. Continue toward home as Batani and Nala go head to head. Teeth and claws, and Simba and Nala score off his earlier injuries, weakening him enough to give Zira a fighting champs chance. She leaps and he's fighting. A... <laughs> I'm, 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 wow! I cannot believe this guy put this. And this is just telling you the day, the uh, time this is written. So, okay, again, not me who wrote this. This guy wrote this. He's fighting a woman. If he wins, he loses. If he loses, he loses. Wow. That's messed up. Anyway. Again. Dang. This is coming from a Disney storyboard artist, too. Anyway. Uh, so, that's the end. <laughs> We're going to leave it off there. Uh, she leaps, and what happens after that? Hmm. I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see how the ending pans out here. Let me tell you, it's very interesting. Um, so yeah, we're on page, uh, you can probably get some hints of it from what was going on here, but we're on page 80. Our next video will be the last one, unfortunately, for the script. That said, I'll probably still have a bunch of videos eventually explaining different aspects about it, going into further detail about things, etc. Um, when those videos will be out, probably not for a while, I'm very busy, but um, I will try. Um, so yeah, the next, the next episode will be going into the final pages of the script, but also something else, um, that you will see that might be of a surprise to you that I also have from the same guy. And we'll analyze that in the same video. Uh, with that said, uh, please like and subscribe. Um, again, click that notification so you get notification of the next video and even possible future stuff to come from this channel. And I will see you guys in the finale to this wonderful, wonderful script read and analyzing a uh, series that we have been doing. All right. Thank you. And I'll see you guys in the next video.